miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Mark Klein hanging out with you. Welcome to the Long Island Blues Warehouse. Every Sunday night from 8 till 10 Eastern Standard Time. Here's where you're going to find us hanging out, bringing you the best of the blues. Every Wednesday from 7 to 9, we do it all again with the Encore Show. And, of course, you always want to check that out at liblues.com. This week's featured artist in the studio with us right now. Kerry Carney and Frank Latour, otherwise known this week as the Frank and Kerry Coalition. Good evening, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Kerry Carney. Oh. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing well, thank you. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, too. You two are no strangers to the show. We've had you both in here on several occasions. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you again, Frank. Good to see you, too, man. What's exciting and new, my man? Everything's new. The art gallery uh, is the new thing. Yeah. You got a new. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Good. Uh, I say we reintroduce Long Island and all of the world to you fine musicians immediately. Then we're going to come back and chat with you boys. What are we doing first? Um, we're going to do one of my songs. Though. Say it again. We're going to do one of my tunes. Called? Here. What's this called here? It's a it's a magic song. A magic song. If that's magic the title, song. I like it. Right here on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to kick things off with Kerry Carney. And Frank Latour. It's a song called uh, Dreams of Loving You. job, ain't got no car, to get me around, ain't got no food, got nothing to eat, ain't got no shoes, to cover my feet, cause all I've got is the dreams of loving. All I've got is dreams of loving you. Ain't got no watch to tell me the time. Ain't got no nickel. And sure ain't got a dime. Ain't got no girl to cook my meal. Ain't got one night. To some on the field Cause all I've got is The dreams of loving Cause all I've got is The dreams of loving you Very nice. This week's featured artist, Kerry Carney, Frank Latour. Frank, let's start with you, my man. 
That's an original of yours, huh? Yeah, it's a little something we, uh, we cooked up, yeah. Well done, my man. Thank well you. done, if I may say. I want to talk about some history with you. We're going to touch on a few things with the both of you, but uh, your band, m well known around Long Island area, the King Bees, Frank Latour and the King Bees, started when? Um, mid 80s. Mid 80s, yeah. you started that project. Yeah. Um, how did you go about? I mean, the band's gone through several changes over the years with lineups and musicians that you've you've had. I mean, you played with. You played with Pam Betty. You've done a few things with Kerry over the years. Let's talk about like the original lineup with with uh, the King Bees and how you started that project. You remember how you began the King Bee project? Uh, yeah, the, well, King Bees was named after a Muddy Waters song. Uh, we were a blues rock, uh, you know, type of type of band. The early days of uh, Gary Bordy's on bass, uh, Bobby Icon on uh, on guitar. Sure, sure. Uh, Zach. I don't remember Zach's you know, last name. Uh, Zach on the drums. And, uh, you know, we went out there, you know, did our thing with a blues thing. There wasn't a lot of blues bands at that time. It was, a, it was pretty, like, a, you know, a bunch of shredders. So. You, had, you, you had Sam Taylor. You had Little Buster. You had the Last Chance Blues Band with Stevie Cochran. Well, Sam, Sam Taylor wasn't, wasn't on the island doing his thing. He was wherever he was. It was uh, oh, he came on the island a bit the later, only, right? The only bands really around that, at that time, you know, Little Buster. Was a was a blues band. Last Chance Blues Band with Stevie Cochran, uh, if you remember. Yeah, uh, if that, that might have been not many a more. After that. No, not many there, more. No, there wasn't a whole lot. You know, there wasn't a whole and lot. And you were a big contributor to the blues scene back in those days. Um, I, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. You I, guess I, so. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I don't. Know. I know so. Yeah. I don't know much, but that I do know. I do know that. And uh, tremendous job, my man. Tremendous job. Let's uh, let's talk to uh, Kerry for a second. Kerry, I've had you on the stage a few times yourself over the years, and it's always a pleasure to get you in here with your own project as well. Let's talk about when you uh, got started on the island. You've been playing on the island since, what, the early 80s yourself? Well, Frank didn't shave tonight, but I did. You did shave. I shaved. You didn't get a haircut. See, see, you, usually, usually he's the clean shave. You didn't get the skin. Usually he's the shaving one. You didn't I'm get the, the haircut I'm, that I'm I requested. I'm the ruggy one, but tonight I thought that I was going to like upstage everybody, but I guess it didn't work. Though. Well, if you got the haircut that I requested, you might have. Oh, there you go. But it balances out. You're cleanly shaven. He's got the shorter, neat hair, and uh, I had it on before. It works out nice. Good for you. Man. Cosmetically, you two work well together. Cool. Musically, you two work incredible together. Mm. Let's talk about how you got involved in working with Frank to do this coalition project that you boys are a part of together? How did it um, come about? <coughs> the Blue Society's been asking me for a long time. Who? To, the Blue Society. The Long Island the Blue, Long Blue Society. Society okay. Yes, for quite a long time to, um, to come and play some acoustic stuff. And I had never really got together to do it. And Frank had asked me this year, and I kind of broke down to it. I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll you see broke down? I broke down. You needed your arm twisted a little bit, huh? I broken down, baby. Yeah, I did, yeah. That's what Sam would say. Okay, mm -hmm. we're know, talking I'm about broken. legend. He starts singing actually. We're talking about talking legendary, legendary blues man Sam Taylor, of course. Right. Yes, who we play on this show. Is there as any other Sam weekend. out there? Is there any other Sam? Not many. Not, not any actually that I know oh. of. And uh, we were all blessed to know Sam Taylor, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll talk about Sam a little bit later. But uh, as far as your both of your abilities to do what you do, you guys are tremendous contributors to the blues scene on the Long Island, New York area. And I thank you boys in advance so much for you doing what you do. We got a live band in here every week, as you both know, and you guys always make a tremendous addition and uh, contribution to what we do. So I thank you both for that. Recently, you two just started playing together in uh, February, uh, end of Jan February 2nd to February 6th. Uh, the IBC, the International Blues Competition down mm -hmm. in Memphis. It's going to be their 27th annual IBC competition. You two have teamed up to take part in the acoustic duel competition representing Long Island. Mm -hmm. Who decided that this is something you two were going to do? How, who came to who and said, hey, let's, let's team up and do Frank this? Came Frank came to you. Mm -hmm. And, and what did you basically say to him, Frank? I said he was the only guy that I could think of that would... Uh We'd be able to, you know, carry this ball down there. So, you know, we, we went through a process of elimination up here. Mm. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have the honor to represent Long Island and the Long Island Blues Society. And uh, I couldn't think of anybody else. Um, that you wanted to. As well, as well rounded as uh, Kerry as far as he could yeah. do. He could do a solo or a duo or a band thing. So mm. it worked out. And it was a good choice, I thought. You two work great on your own. You guys work better, in my opinion, together. And... We're thrilled to do it. I said we put you boys back to work. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. What are well, we going to do next? Um, you got one? I got one. Yeah, what do you, want? you got one, Kerry? Um, yeah. Got one for you. I see we're well prepared with a nice set list. We got it. Got it right up here. It's up here, right? Mm -hmm. 
That's what I thought. What are we doing next, my man? Uh, we're gonna do a little tune. Called? It's called. It's called Louise. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure who originally did it. I heard the Yardbirds do it a long time ago, and then I got the uh, the Vanguard Greatest Blues um, vinyl when I was young, actually, and it was on there too. But I forget who the person who, who did it though. All right. My, my phone is ringing, by the way. We're going to have yeah, the Kerry yeah. Carney rendition right now? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you shutting that the off. The Coalition. The Coalition edition. Well, right here on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep things moving with just those individuals. This is Kerry Carney and Frank Latour, otherwise known as the Frank and Kerry Coalition. Cool. We are on the back porch, so it feels anyway, with this week's featured artist, Kerry Carney, Frank Latour. Nicely done, Kerry. That was a cover, huh? Very nice. That was a cover tune, huh? It was. I would have... The origin, I don't know who it is, though. I would have guessed it was an original, but you made it your own, as you always do. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about uh, writing. You guys are both tremendous writers with your material. Let's start with you, Kerry. Mm -hmm. It's different for everybody. How, do, how is the... <clears throat> thought process work for you particularly when it comes to writing tunes? You've, you've got a catalog of what, eight or ten CDs out these days? Uh, about twelve. You've got twelve know. CDs out right so, yeah. now. Quite a few. About 90% of those CDs are originals. It's written. really one CD that we just kept rehashing. So Alright. You did do a trilogy thing. You know, um, James Taylor once said that he's, he's written about 300 songs in his life, but really only 35. Is that what James Taylor said? Yeah. And what do you say? 
I, it's kind of like that, I guess. Kind of? Kind of, sort of, but not really? Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 <laughs> CDs. Uh, I'd say with the CDs I've listened to, I probably have about 80% of your CDs. Mm-hmm. I don't have them all. I don't have them all. A few of them are compilations, so that's not really A few old. of them are compilations. Yeah, yeah, but probably 80 to 90% of your CDs are filled with original music mm-hmm. written exclusively by you. Mm-hmm. Do you collaborate? Do you write on your own? How does that work for you? <laughs> I collaborate sometimes. Um, I find collaboration is a good thing. It's a good, uh, it's a healthy, co- not a competition, but it's a healthy thing to get together like that. And uh, <clears throat> it's good to bounce off things. Even recording, I think, is that way too with stuff. When you're recording, it's more of a, uh, you have certain kind of ideas in your head, but then somebody might like pull out a little something like that, and it'll make it that much better, I think. Do you write, have you written a tune and said, <clears throat> ah, I'm not really sure what I think about it, put it on the shelf for a period of time maybe, come back to it later and, and, pl- and play with it some more and make some sort of you know, creation out of it? It's funny. If I, when I first do something, I kind of like it at first, and then like about 10 minutes, I, I don't like it that much. You've gone through that. But what I'll do is I'll put on, I have a little tape recorder, a little, um, little small little dictaphone type thing. Sure. Can I say dictaphone on the word? I hope so. Okay. But, um... I'll put on one of those, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll put about 50 things on throughout the year, and I'll listen to it at the end of the year, and I'll... See what grabs you. Yeah, about, about 10 things or 11 things out of that I'll... I'll work with. Work with. I'll try to... I got you. I got you. Um, but I'll, always trying to do something different all the time. Always trying to up the ante a little bit all the time. With, with you, you're, you're notorious for that, actually. You've, you've done... You, you, I, I, that's the word I'd want to use. Can I quote that one? If you right feel the need, if you feel the need, <laughs> I'm pulling the big words out tonight because we got the big boys on the stage, and I'm happy to have you boys in here. Frank, let's talk about you with your uh, writing uh, abilities. You've uh, had some serious creativity over the years with a lot of t- the King Bee Boogie, the, the new thing that you got going. I don't think we're doing that tonight, by the way, are we? No, we're not going to do that. I didn't King think Bee we were. That's because that's a serious, that's a serious electric with a big band behind you type thing. Um, I love what you do, the acoustic mellow thing you're doing as well. Let's talk about writing for you. How does the thought process work for you in terms of writing some of these tunes you've written over the years? Uh, it's a life experience, you know. But uh, I write like a modern day, you know, our day blues, you know, because uh, you know things of uh, you know everyday life, happy, sad, you know, love, hate. Every emotion, you know, that's what the blues covers, pretty much. So You're not kidding. And as far as your abilities, as far as an artist is concerned, you do a hell of a job, obviously, vocally, musically, um, singing, playing the harp, playing the guitar. Your artistic abilities don't end there, do they? Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a painter. I'm a, a lot of different artists as, as, as well. But as far as when I'm, um, you know, like uh, music performing, to me is... Um, it's just like painting with sound. It's just, it's all it's it's all relative. It's it's the same thing, you know. We'll get into a groove uh, with the King Bee things, or if I sit in with Carrie, or sit in with another band, or different musical situations. And there's a point, um, at some point in the song, when when it starts to gel, and you start to gel with musicians, where um, it's just fluid. It's 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 as easy as pouring a glass of water, when and. It just flows out of all the all the people, and it's uh, it's just like splashing paint on a canvas, or or, or whatever the medium is. You talk about that water pouring out of a glass and the way it flows. And I'm I'm assuming in terms of your ability to start to finish a, a piece, whether it be a song or a painting. Do you ever get halfway through something, whether it be writing a tune or 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 painting a picture? And you get a block that you need to stop and, and, and get away from the, either the canvas or from the, the, the pen and paper writing tunes and come back to it later? Well, the song, song process or music, um, sometimes you'll get just a, you know, a, a little lick in your head and you'll build a, a vocal thing around that. Or else uh, you'll be driving in your car or whatever, or whatever you're doing. And um, the, the words, will, the, for me, myself, anyway, my process, the words, words will come to me. And then... Um, I'll just write them down while I'm driving, and try to write them down on whatever I, you know, I could find, you know, to uh, so I don't lose the idea because uh, so many ideas can sure, just sure. come in and out of your head, whether it's uh, the music or the lyrics, and um, you know, not everything is a home run ball. You know, you you have an idea and it's got to click, it's got to gel, and then you got to find the other people that are, you know, could see the same vision. Sometimes those visions, when you got collaboration, they'll they'll change. From your your initial painting or whatever, or your the original song that you had in your head, but the the root is still there. So okay. It, you know. So every ball you hit is not a home run in your opinion, but you have one hell of a batting average, don't you? Uh, 
<laughs> I strike out. I strike out a lot as you well. You find yourself striking out from time to time. Uh, yeah, but with what I, myself and the public sees when you perform, like I said, you've got a hell of a high batting average in terms of your abilities vocally and and musically with what you do and your your creative style, and it's very impressive. Yeah, I, I just I enjoy it. I love it. it like I said, it's just an, another artistic expression, and. Um, the neat thing about when I'm playing music is um, there's not another thought in my head. You you have that kind of focus. It, it's that kind of an escape. Whether it's a focus or not, I don't know. But it's that, it's that kind of a, a thing. There's nothing else going on. There's nothing else going on. So if the phone rings, or do you have music going, or the TV on, or you don't, you can you can stay focused or or stick to that escape, as you say, without any interruptions or without losing the train of thought on what you're working on? We've had a play in Long Island sports boys during football season. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get any more distractive than that. Okay, and you can stay the course. Yeah, in most, most cases. In most cases. Yeah. There are exceptions to every rule, I suppose, eh? Yeah, well, the, that could be maddening. Uh, all right, all right, very nice. Yeah. I said we put you boys back to work. Let's keep the live tunes happening. Please, I'm much better with that. Uh, listen, I, I know you're out of your comfort zone chatting a little bit, but we appreciate getting a little a little bit on, on what makes Frank Latour tick inside. And, and it gives people a bit of insight on, on how or why you're capable of doing what it is you do. So we thank you for that. Right. It's because I love it. That's the only reason. Well, that makes sense. The passion comes through heavy on both of you fellas. And uh, I say we continue. Let's continue to show Long Island and the rest of the world what Frank Latour and Kerry Carney do. Well, on Long Island. What are we doing next, Frank? It's a song called Riding in the Rain. R written by who? Uh, it's something I put together, but Kerry collaborated with me. On nice. You good to go, Kerry? I collaborated very little, but Are you good to go on the tune? Yes. Love that guitar, my man. Cool. Once again on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Kerry Carney and Frank Latour. Let's do it. Riding in a thunderstorm In a pouring rain Lightning flashing all around me I can barely see Raindrops feel like buckshot As they hit against my face Tires slide out from under me I could hardly hold it straight Wiping out just don't seem bad In this life of pain Down this lonesome road, won't be back again. Crack that throttle in a ride on. Love. 
about the pain Cause I'm gonna leave this one horse town I won't be back again Oh yeah, this week's featured artist, Kerry Carney, Frank Latour, otherwise known as the Frank and Kerry Coalition. Nicely done, Frank. Thank you. Nicely done. Let's talk about this IBC thing you guys are heading up to shortly. You guys are going to be going down to Memphis, Tennessee, as we mentioned earlier, representing Long Island and the big... IBS? IBC. Oh, I'm sorry. IBS? Do you have IBS? <laughs> that insurance? Close enough. Close enough, yeah. Close exactly. enough. The IBC, the International Blues Competition in Memphis, Tennessee, number 27. And you boys are representing Long Island in the acoustic dual competition. Give me some ideas on the rules and regulations. First of all, how long can your set be for this thing? Uh, 25 minutes. 25 minutes. So you guys are going to play, <coughs> try and do five or six tunes? Probably five songs. What, I know there's some, some penalties if you go over or if you go too under. How does that work? Do you guys Can you share that with us? Um, you can't go over time. If you go over 25 minutes, what happens? You get, they deduct points. They deduct points. Yes. They could love the hell out of what you guys do, and if you go 26 minutes, you're getting a deduction. Well, you know, I, I feel like somebody has it out for you if somebody doesn't like what you're doing, or if somebody doesn't like you, period, if you're from New York. You're talking about in terms of judges? I, I, yeah, I think I've, I've seen that before with stuff, actually, with you, people doing stuff like that. Like, it's it's kind of like a secretive kind of thing, but I noticed that about stuff. A little closer on that mic. They, they, I feel like some judges do that kind of thing. And you see it like in the Olympics. You see it in stuff like that at the same time. You notice that all of a sudden everybody's got a 10 and somebody's got a 5. Like somebody's got it out for somebody's country or whatever it is at the same time. I feel like New Yorkers don't get the, um, the do that they need about being blues musicians. I Why do you that. feel that way? And I felt it when I was in Memphis last time. You felt shorted with the judges. It's similar, I, I think a little bit, yeah. It's similar. I mean, not that it was um, that heavy, but I, f I got uh, a little bit of feedback later on about something about that. You're saying, and it was a judge person. Who told it's me that. a little bit political, is what you're. I, I find that it is. Yeah, I find a little bit. Yeah, I think people are like that. With so with that, you I mean, I, I, but everywhere you go, with any kind of contest you're in, I think it's like that. Well, that's you know, what can you do? I no, mean, no, but I'm not saying. Anything. I'm just saying that that is something that that goes on. And I feel like even if you did go over, if they really liked you, this or that, and, you know, I think it's, it's one thing. But I feel like they're looking for something to really get you on. I feel like that's what it is. And you can't play, um, what is it? Mustang Sally you can't play, I think. <laughs> and I, you know, put that in. I think it was Buddy Fox put that in, actually, in the clause. He was the one who wrote the bylaws of that thing. Buddy Fox. is that? We're talking about the same Buddy Fox that the used to own buddy. Manny's Car Wash yes. Blues? They're losing, um, in the city? They're losing over Hawaii, Hawaii now. Hi, buddy. He used to Love you, buddy. He, you we're time. talking about a guy uh, that had a big blues club in New York City. Mm-hmm. They, like, tripled his rent in one month, mm. and he had to shut down. And then he did a blues cruise out of New York City for <laughs> yes. a while, and then he moved to Hawaii. Does he have a club in Hawaii now? I'm not sure if he does. Blues I don't know. Club? It's funny but that he But he was an impresario with a lot of clubs in the city, actually. He got us to do quite a few places, the bottom line. We used to do a lot, and um, it was all because of him. Yeah, he was. And I want to thank him wherever he is out there, buddy. Buddy Guy, the old owner of Manny's Car Wash Blues. Buddy where Fox. We are? Uh, buddy Fox, rather. I'm sorry. <laughs> buddy Guy. Said, buddy, listen. Another blues icon, if Listen, you ask me. I don't want to get too political with the Please. politics about what we talked about before, going back to that. But, uh, but I find that in different things. I find that in them. It's very... This is your... Very, what? There these is things. this your second time going down to Memphis? It is, actually, yeah. No, I was there quite a few times. But there was a second, the second time for going back to do a contest. To, to, to actually compete. Yes, to do that. Yes. Frank, how many times have you been down there? This is my third. Your third time for competition? Yeah. All right. You were down there with the King Bees, with JP Blues. Yes, Twice with the King Bees, and then this time, uh, this time here. Third, this third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. The judges <laughs> love me now down there. Is it the same judging, the same judging panel every year? Do they use the they, same? They, they mix them up. They do mix them up. You know, um, hopefully to break up this monotony of what Kerry was talking about with the uh, feeling that. Uh, you know, you, you watch a boxing competition or any kind of competition, and um, you know, there's all, there's all, there's always uh, speculation or controversy somewhere. You know, with, uh, with any of that, I don't I don't know. You know, I guess they do the best job they can, and they got their homeboys, and you know, what, whatever. I think that um, I saw some terrific bands down there uh, when we uh, competed last year. Uh, one of the bands that I thought was uh, in, in our club. We had three uh, bands from our club that um, were the were the highest in the scoring, and uh, one of them was uh, from Lafia. Okay. Which. You know, Lafayette, where's Lafayette? I don't even know where it is on the map, but the guys were fantastic, you know. And uh, a band from Mississippi won. Um, you never know. 
you know, what, what they're going to like. You know, um, we had the, uh, we had Toby Walker, Toby Walker won, uh, you know, uh, when, when he went down there. So I guess it's, uh, they change the judges around. You hope it's, it's a, it's a draw in the hat. You know, they're all talented uh, people from all over the world. You just, you hope that you get the, the right judge at the right time that he likes you and then, Hopefully the moon and the earth and the sun are all aligned together. There's, a, there's so many so many variables, you know. You just go there and you... You do your passion. You, you do your thing and, and... Hope for the best. That's all. Hope for the best. We moved down there. That was the, it was 14 years ago, actually. 15 years ago. In 96. Was that 15 years ago? It's going to be. In yeah. January. Yeah. Um, we, um, our competition, or who, who we were against, actually, was a, um, a young kid. He was about 17. He was on the cover of the Memphis... I guess the Memphis Sun that morning, okay, as the favorite, okay. Um, we were also against um, a really great African American gospel band from Chicago that was that was fantastic. The old matching suits, about twelve of them in the band. It was amazing. A woman, her name was Jocelyn B, um, and she had sang, and she was unbelievably fantastic, fantastic. But it's like I'm trying to think to myself, how can you really judge something like that when you have like the kid who was great, like Phenom, about seventeen years old, playing really, really great. You have her doing her thing. You have other bands doing their thing. Like, how can you really, you know, judge that kind of stuff like that? There's no, there was no, to me, there's no competition. It's all, everybody's really, really good musicians, and it's really, really great. How many judges are in the panel <clears throat> watching you play? I think there was about four or five, was it? Uh, yeah, I think there were four. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> like that, yeah. All right. But that's a hard thing to judge. I mean, might how can you three. judge? Might have been three, actually. You know, that kid over, the, that woman, or this and that, and I think the kid went on, I think, to the next round, I think it was. But it was really, it was amazing how, how could you, do, you know, really? There's, there's probably about 75 judges, maybe more, because uh, the thing has grown so huge. <laughs> Last year, there was 120 bands. There were like nine bands in each club, so I don't know what the, the math is. And figured three, three, you know, judges with, and some, two, five, you know, whatever they had. Uh, you know, the, the music is constantly going for those days. Everybody's playing like, you know, you, you walk down the street and you're listening to band after band after band after band. There's... There's all these clubs involved. And Are any of the tunes you guys playing tonight on the stage with us right now going to be part of the set for the show you're doing when you go down there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Well, so far, so good in my opinion. Yeah, Unfortunately, I'm not a judge. No, that's, 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 that's okay. It's <laughs> but all, you know it's what? Over. Listen, it's about, it's about the passion, obviously, and, and, and the creativity and the abilities and, and those three categories. I mean, the stage presence and all the other categories they've thrown in there. You guys have all that at the top of your game anyway. Well, <laughs> I won't even go there. When I went last year, we did very good musically. And the first time that I went there, we, I, I couldn't get the whole band on the same page as far as you know, apparel. Because you, know, you get a band that comes out of Kansas City or comes out of Chicago or something, and they're dressed to the nines with these designer suits, all purple suits and the whole bit. Are you two going to be matching on any level when you go down there? Um, we're going to look as if we're, we're on the same team. You know, okay. I don't know. I don't want to dress up yeah. like Ken and Barbie or whatever. <laughs> but um, what we did last year was, uh, okay, we're not going to let that happen to us again. <laughs> so we went out and um, we had some uh, real good sponsorship. A lot of people donated. And I was able to get all the guys uh, brand new black suits. We had yellow shirts with a, yeah, you guys with a black tie, you know, the, the whole bit. And we got a four from one judge on appearance. So... You know, so uh, you know, uh, so you, you don't you don't know. You just go there and you pl you play your your socks off. And, Maybe you uh, should try t-shirts and ripped shorts this year. Well, the band that won, <laughs> the band that won actually, uh, that was. Uh, the, Tell me, the they had that kind of look going on. Uh, I think that we might have looked maybe too gangster like. You know, for you think for it might have hurt, yeah. It, it doesn't matter. It, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever they're gonna do, you know, they're gonna they're gonna do. You know, the bottom line is, me and Kerry have a lotto ticket. And you gotta have, you gotta be in it to win it, and that's and that's and, that, and, and that's it. Do me a favor, guys. When you go down there and represent Long Island, go casual and comfortable, and just do what you're doing tonight. Yeah. Do that, and what else do you need? Let the chips fall where they may. I'm going to have fun and eat some take bar in, barbecue. Take in the experience, enjoy the barbecue, enjoy the other <laughs> bands that play, and just give it your all, as you two do every time you guys take yeah. any stage. Whether you guys play at the barbecue in front of 20 people or whether you guys play at Riverhead in front of 5,000 people, you guys give the same effort, the same... Barbecue is always packed when we play there. Actually, it is pretty packed. I'm, you know, I love barbecue, darn it. 
Eric over there at the barbecue, a good friend of all of ours. Boy, barbecues, we're supposed to be there. That's right. Right now? No, not, not now. <laughs> not now. When, when is that? We're going to be there on, on the, the 15th of January. This it's, coalition it's that you two are doing? Yes, it's going to yeah, be it's um, a fundraiser, fundraiser for us uh, to, to go down there. To raise some funds. So, to so that me and Kerry could buy those cute suits. So, so you can get a full rack of ribs instead of the half rack. So don't be stingy and go to barbecues <laughs> and... Come let's get into another tune. Then I want to plug a couple dates. We're going to talk about some websites and... Uh, Let's keep it moving. What are we doing next, boys? Cool. We're doing, we're doing, uh, a little something. doing one of carries. Let's do it. Uh, we'll do we're going to do a carry tune? We'll do a little yeah. picking. We're going to do some picking? We'll do a little picking soon. What's the name of the piece? I'm not sure yet. Until I stop playing. <laughs> what is it with that with you? Every time you take the stage with me, I'm like, Carrie, what are we doing next? And you don't oh, yeah. know until you open up your mouth. Well, before you play it, let me say this. Once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving with Carrie Carney and Frank Latour. Kerry Carney, Frank Latour, the Frank and Kerry Coalition, representing Long Island and the Big IBC, the International Blues Competition, the 27th Annual. And boys, for what it's worth, I think you guys, I think you guys are going to be up there. That's my opinion. Cool, man. But what the hell do I know? I know a fair amount. Kerry, nicely done, my man. Nicely done. Thank you. Let's talk about uh, the upcoming date you guys are doing at the barbecue. What's the date on that again? 15th. The fifteenth oh, of January. Of January. And the next day is also one. Also, they're going to have a uh, fundraiser for us somewhere over in um, Farmingdale. Yes. Yes, it is somewhere over in Farmingdale. Uh, there's a gig. This is, this is bad. I don't We're so focused on this barbecue yeah. uh, gig because it's just going to be outstanding. That 
I don't even know where they're dragging us. When you guys play there separately, you guys usually pack the place. So I can't imagine how crazy it's going to be with the two of you in there. Yeah, it's it's crazy with a cause too, so it's probably gonna, you know. For people on long, for people on Long Island listening, we're talking about a, a, a nice little barbecue restaurant in Patchogue called the Barbecue B O B B I Q U E dot com, named after the owner's uh, daughter Bobby, of course. Uh, we're talking about an owner, Eric, who went down to Memphis, if I'm not mistaken, some years back for like six months to learn the science of barbecue. He takes a, a, a he takes a rack of ribs. Well, he cooks like a hundred racks at a time in a big smoker he's got in the back. <coughs> you take a bite of a rib, you got a bare bone in your hand with a piece of meat hanging from your mouth. Mm. He's so tender. You guys know. What do you mean? Mm. You had the ribs there. I'm letting you talk. I'm, you talk. I'm just letting people know what the experience is like at the barbecue in terms you of their ribs. That, that right? And if you appreciate the music we're doing tonight, this is what you boys are going to be doing when you're there right. on and, January and 15th. Something. And then That's some, and we're looking forward to it. Kerry, I want to talk about your website so people can follow okay. what you do. Let's uh, tell people your website, please. You can find that. It's kerrycarney.com, and you can find that everything you want about the, uh, the Now show the people have grabbed up. a pen to write it down once again so they can understand you. What I'm saying? Yes. Kerrycarney.com with a K. K-E-R-R-Y. Kerry Carney. Carney. Yes, dot com. Dot com. And you can find that all the places that we're playing. Actually, you can find out all about the, the up-and-coming um, fundraisers that we're doing. Okay, the one in Farmingdale that you one in Farmingdale, the, the name's escaping you at the moment, and then one and one in barbecue also. Yeah, okay, uh, Frank, you have a website as well. Please share it with us. Uh, franklatory dot com or kingbeesny dot com. Spell the first one if you would. F R A N K L A T O R R E dot com. And uh, upcoming dates, and <coughs> let's talk about the art gallery. Can people? Is there a separate website for the art gallery? Uh, art and soul dash gallery dot com. Art and soul. Say that. Say it again. Art a r t and soul s o u l. You have to spell out and a n d. No, it's that and sign. It's the and sign. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dash gallery dot com. Very nice. You are a hell of an artist in terms of painting. Um, there used to be a venue doesn't exist here on Long Island anymore called Paula Jean Supper Club. It was up in East Atawket, and when you walked in this room, there were, I don't know, about 100 paintings on the wall, all of which were put together and painted by yourself. Yes, Paul From James. Buddy Guy to B.B. King to John Lee Hooker to Little Buster, Sam Taylor. Throw some other names up there that me that you had painted on that wall. Uh, there. Lightning Hopkins. Lightning um, Hopkins. Big eyed Willie Smith. Right, right, right. Uh, all, all, whole, ki all kinds. All do you, kinds do you of still have all those paintings now that the place? Did you get them back? I have a bunch of of paintings, but those I sold to Peter. You sold uh, them Letson. to him. Uh, his daughter uh, owns the collect okay. uh, collection at this time. Yeah. Okay. Do you still you do portraits of of people still today, or is it scenery stuff you're doing? Um, the gallery I have is a Long Island-based gallery. I know so you change direction a, a lot of, from time uh, to time. Yeah, a lot of the paintings I'm doing are uh, indigenous to the area where I am, but I still do uh, commission portraits or wall murals or glass. Big wall murals, murals in a lot of Italian restaurants around the island. Well, all, all, all genders of, uh, you know, all, all kinds of restaurants and homes, and uh, I do a lot of residential work as far as uh, murals and homes and stuff. But, um, Still want to talk to you about doing one something Blues Warehouse related. There not, you go. Not necessarily with me in it, but uh, something maybe maybe Kerry can represent the Blues Warehouse. Do it with some sunglasses on. I don't know, we'll figure out something. <laughs> but your schedule is so you know, busy. If somebody else is sitting here right now, you would say we'll do something about them. So just because I'm sitting here, you said that to me. You think that's the reason? Exactly. No, I from the heart, Kerry. I got you. Baby. Kerry, my love for you is I is know, like is like no other. I believe he looks sincere. I believe him. I, 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 all right, I'll let you go. <laughs> Listen, talk about sincerity. Let's keep it moving with uh, some sincere live tunes. Let's do it. We have time for probably two more. Good music. I, let's put you people back to work. Not music. We're not doing elevator music. Music. Thank you. Thank you. What are we doing next, people? What are we doing, Mississippi? What? Get on down to Mississippi River, Mississippi River song. All right. You gonna pick up the Dobro? Yes, you this, are. This is actually gonna be one of your, your theme tunes. One of my theme tunes? One of your theme tunes for the show. The Mississippi River. I know, I know you have one already. It's beautiful. I love that, that theme song you have. Well, I appreciate you great loving Scott my Ross. Very nice. Scott one. Ross. That's a great one, actually. Very nice. Yeah, I played with Scott Ross. Right? Great, great guitar. Player. The yeah. out of my Blues Brothers intro, that uh, great blues guitar piece you hear, Scott Long Island's own Scott Ross. We'll get him back in here in the new year. We're looking to do that as well. You played with you played with Scott. 
Many a times, yeah. Is that right? Sure. I don't sure remember do. knowing that. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. We'll have to talk more about that. Another story for another time. You good to go, Kerry Carney? Good. Always good. Thank Frank Latour, you all set? I'm, I'm always ready. Ready to go. Well, I'm good to go as well, so let's do it again. On the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep things moving with Kerry Carney, Frank Latour, the Frank and Kerry Coalition. This week's featured artist, Kerry Carney, Frank Latour, the Frank and Kerry Coalition. Frank, let me ask you a question. Sure. When you guys are all done with the Memphis thing the first week in February, will you and Kerry continue to work together musically? If we win. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, I don't want to jinx anything. I'm, I mean, you guys, in my opinion, are already winners. We're going to do, do a couple shows before that, actually, too. We're going to be playing at the Gathering of Slides together. That's coming up also. The Gathering of the Slides is yes. taking place in January. January 22nd. January 22nd. Saturday night at, the, at Berkner Hall. Berkner Hall yes. in, a, in a part of Long Island called Upton. Upton. I didn't know there was an Upton, New York. Upton, New York. What's Brook, it near? Brook, is it, is Brookhaven, it near Downton? Brookhaven Lab. Brookhaven Lab. Brookhaven Lab. It's off the... Um, L.I.E.? William Floyd Parkway. The William Floyd Parkway yeah, out east there on Long Island. Yeah. You guys, uh, matter of fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I will perhaps make a few introductions... Am I gonna am I gonna do a little introduction uh, work that night? We'll see. Rumor has it. We'll see. All right, we'll take it as it comes. Yes, you will. What the else? You got, will be there. What man, else you got coming man. up? What else you got coming up? Um, well, that. Um, let me think. It's pretty much. All right. What's happening? I think. All right. I I insist on seeing. But also the big the big thing is that we're doing the um, the fundraiser. A little closer on that mic. The fundraisers we're gonna be doing. Uh, the fifteenth of January at at, uh, at barbecues. Barbecue, and then we're gonna do it again in um, Farmingdale. Yes, Saturday. but you got to go to Sunday. barbecue. It's a secret gig the next day. You go to barbecue on the 15th, and then we'll tell you where to go on the 16th. You've got to find out what's going on. You'll know the name of the place at that point. Well, you already know it. I just don't <laughs> know. Or they can go to kerrycarney.com and look it up there as well, as he mentioned no, earlier. Yeah. It'll, it'll be up by then. It'll be up by the time this is aired. 
Look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to it. You guys are tremendous contributors to what we do on Long Island with the Blues, and I thank you both so much for it. Well, thank you, Mark, for having the show. Frank Latour. Without you, there would be no, none of us, and us wouldn't be any of you, and back and forth. And, and so on and so blah, forth. Blah, blah, blah. Well, please come back and see me uh, on the stage again with your own projects and the two of you together again. I insist we do this again. It's always a blast having you boys in here. You boys are going to play us out in a second. Okay. Before we do, I just want to say uh, thank you for hanging out with us on the Long Island Blues Warehouse every Sunday night from 8 to 10. Here's where you're going to find us, bringing you some of the Long Island's greatest bands, basically known to man. You know what I mean over there, Wally? Big Wally let's from... Audience. Let's hear about the audience. Woo! Let's hear about these guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. Let's uh, thank Wally from coming down from the Brightwater's Inn, the infamous Brightwater's Inn in Brightwater's Long Island. They've got a great live you know music venue themselves thank, taking place. I want to thank them for the great fundraise. I mean, the first, we did the contest. For the IBC. Over at the break. It was un unbelievable. Fantastic. That's right, at the Brightwater's. Unbelievable. Wally, you guys usu the best. Wally usually can't come down and see the show, but we changed nights tonight to do it so he can come down and, and check ah, out the show. You. So it was good for him to hang out and really? see you guys do your thing here. So we appreciate that. Uh, always check out liblues.com, of course, uh, the website for <laughs> this show, The Blues Warehouse. And EKO Studios, you're watching uh, a video perform, uh, recorded at EKO Studios, Deer Park, Long Island. Check them out at ekoproductions.com. See what they're all about. they got some great videos and uh, cool things that they do, this show included, the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. Thank you, boys, for coming in and doing this. You're going to play us out. What are we going to finish up with? Well, this, this acoustic thing is really interesting to me because I usually have the... Um the cushion of an electric band. So this is kind of like being naked in Macy's window. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a version of Rolling and Tumbling for you. Sounds good. You good to go? Yeah. One more time on the Blues Warehouse. We're going to wrap it up with Kerry Carney, Frank Latour, the Kerry and Frank Coalition. Thank you, John. I'm rolling, tumbling, tumbling home that long. Well, I'm rolling and tumbling, tumbling home that long. Well, I woke up this morning, all I had was gone.
ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਉਹ।